in a dark, dark room, and other scary stories, retold by Alvin Schwartz. Forward. Most of us like scary stories because we like feeling scared. When there is no real danger, feeling scared is fun. The best time for these stories is at night, in front of a fire or in the dark. Tell them slowly and quietly, and everyone will have a good time. The Teeth I was hurrying home in the dark when I saw a man walking toward me. Do you know what time it is? I asked. The man lit a match to look at his watch. It is eight o'clock, he said. Then he grinned at me. His teeth were three inches long. When I saw them, I ran. Soon I came to another man. Why are you running? The man asked. I just met a man with teeth this long, I said. It scared me. My teeth are longer than that, said the man, and he grinned at me. When I saw his teeth, I ran. Soon I came to another man. Why are you running? he asked me. I just saw a man with teeth this long, I said. That's nothing, said the man. Did you ever see teeth this long? I took one look and I ran all the way home. In the graveyard, a woman in a graveyard sat. Oh, very short and very fat. Oh, she saw three corpses carried in. Oh, very tall and very thin. Oh, to the corpses, the woman said, Will I be like you when I am dead? Oh, to the woman, the corpses said, You will be like us when you are dead. Oh, the co- to the corpses, the woman said, Ah! The Green Ribbon Once there was a girl named Jenny. She was like all other, all the other girls, except for one thing. She always wore a green ribbon around her neck. There was a boy named Alfred in her class. Alfred liked Jenny, and Jenny liked Alfred. One day he asked her, Why do you wear that ribbon all the time? I cannot tell you, said Jenny. But Alfred kept asking, Why do you wear it? And Jenny would say, It is not important. Jenny and Alfred grew up and fell in love. One day they got married. After their wedding, Alfred said, Now that we are married, you must tell me about the green ribbon. You still must wait, said Jenny. I will tell you when the right time comes. Years passed. Alfred and Jenny grew old. One day, Jenny became very sick. The doctor told her she was dying. Jenny called Alfred to her side. Alfred, she said, now I can tell you about the green ribbon. Untie it, and you will see why I could not tell you before. Slowly and carefully, Alfred untied the ribbon, and Jenny's head fell off. In a dark, dark room. In a dark, dark wood, there was a dark, dark house. And in that dark, dark house, 
there was a dark, dark room. And in that dark, dark room, there was a dark, dark chest. And in that dark, dark chest, there was a dark, dark shelf. And on that dark, dark shelf, there was a dark, dark box. And in that dark, dark box, there was a ghost. The night it rained. It was late at night. I was driving past the cemetery when I saw a boy standing in the rain. Do you want to ride home? I asked. Yes, please, he said. I live on Front Street, next to the school. I handed him my old sweater. It is cold tonight, I said, and you are wet. You had better put this on. After that, we did not talk. When we stopped at his house, I said, Keep the sweater. I will get it tomorrow. What is your name? Jim, he said. Thanks for the ride. I stopped for the sweater the next day. A woman came to the door. Is Jim at home? I asked. I have come to pick up my sweater. She looked at me in a strange way. It must have been another boy, she said. Jim is our son, but he has been dead for almost a year. He is buried in the cemetery. I told her how sorry I was, and I laughed. I did not know what to think. The next morning, I went to the cemetery. I wanted to see Jim's grave. Lying across the grave was my sweater. The Pirate Ruth was spending her vacation with her cousin, Susan. A pirate once lived in our house, Susan told Ruth. He died in the room where you are staying. His ghost is supposed to haunt that room, but we have never seen it. I don't believe in ghosts, said Ruth. But the thought of a pirate haunting her room scared her a little. Before she got into bed that night, Ruth looked everywhere. She looked under the bed and under the rug, in the closet and in the drawers, behind the dresser and behind the curtains, and anywhere else a ghost might hide, but she did not find a thing. Ruth yawned and stretched and got into bed. She turned off the light and snuggled under the covers. Just as I thought, she said to herself, there is no one in this room but me. Then a big voice said, and me. The Ghost of John Have you seen the ghost of John? Long white bones and the flesh all gone? Oh, wouldn't it be chilly with no skin on?